Alright, welcome back to Sleecraft Sunday. In this episode, we're going to show you guys how to install a transom. I'm, rooster. Rooster. <laughs> I'm going to show you guys how to install a transom. I'm also finally going to pick up the engine for this boat. It's a 200 horse, 2. A 200 horse, 2.4 liter Mercury V6. I'm really excited about that. And then I'm also just picking up another project sled because, because snowmobiles are cool and roosters aren't. So yeah, let's uh, let's get to it. <gasps> that rooster hates you. All right, welcome back, guys. In this episode of Sleecraft Sundays, we are going to finally be putting in the transom in this 1986 Sleecraft SST Mod V twin tunnel hole. Um, this transom replacement procedure is pretty much the same no matter what materials you use, but I'm going to be using some more advanced materials. You can use marine plywood or even regular plywood if you keep it dry. Um, but I'm going to be using Kusa Blue Water 26. This is a high density closed cell foam uh, mixed in with fiberglass chopped strand and then there's two layers of fiberglass in it. This is about 40% lighter than plywood and will never rot out ever so pretty cool stuff. Uh, I have some uh, fiberglass tools that are used for rolling out air bubbles when you wet out the fabric. I have some pre-cut out shapes out of uh, fiberglass cloth that we're going to use to speed up the process here. I have some polyester resin. I know that uh, people have told me that epoxy is stronger and gets a better bond, and that's true, but this is cheaper, and I blew all the money on the composites. Also, I want to use chopped strand, and it's important that you use a polyester or vinyl ester resin if you're using chopped strand because epoxy is not compatible with it. In this thing, I have some white microspheres. This is used for thickening up the resin to make more of a paste or a glue so it isn't quite so runny. Uh, this is a rum and coke for staying loose and uh, having a good time. This is acetone. Um, you can use this to thin the resin out to get it a little thinner and you can also use it to clean your tools. Here I have some mixing cups. Here I have uh, some mixing sticks, some disposable brushes, and a mixer and a helper. So uh, let's so let's so let's do this. All right, cheers. <laughs> With a mixer? Yeah, you said. That's okay. I'm gonna have two room of coke. Got my mixer. Oh yeah. All right, guys, one last grind session, and then the transom's going in. Let's just see what I've done so far. I've scuffed up this whole tunnel to there. Need to get this little section. And then back here, I just need to get the lower part of the transom and the sides. And then what I want to do last is just dip the grinder into the tunnel and get the side of these tunnels because I want to wrap that glass uh, to hold the floor down. So yeah, it's hot out and Ah, I really hope this is the last time, but then I'm going to vacuum it out, blow it out and pressure wash it and then that means tomorrow when it's nice and dry, I should be able to throw in the transom. I am freaking covered in fiberglass dust and it's about to storm, so I just want to get all this dust out of here. Last time I tried using a hose and it just turned into this slurry, so this time because it's about to storm anyway, going to use that guy. This is going to be a disaster, but again, I'm already just covered in this stuff. Alright, so it's going to rain in, I don't know, about 20 minutes, and this is the last time. I'm going to I'm gonna try to get all the grinding done right now before another thunderstorm hits. There's been a lot of storms here lately. Um, so yeah, let's do it. All right, boys, pretty sure we are done. Everything is scoured. The sides of the tunnels are sanded. The center, the stringer area is all prepped. The transom is prepped. 
Everything's ready to go. Where are we at, Sarah? We're at Turtle Creek. I we're like here. turtles. I like turtles. And we're gonna go see a crazy railroad bridge built in like 1850 something. Yeah, that is a really crazy bridge. What's the name of it again? I don't remember. What does that say? Can you read me the graffiti? Something you, I can guess what that was, eat, eat meat. That was like a pro-vegan uh, graffiti under here. It's super yeah. weird, dude. <laughs> All right, so this is cool. This is a really, really old bridge on Turtle River. I think I remember reading that it was a French design. The original bridge was built in 18... 60 something and then they added this concrete stuff to reinforce it in the 1930s so you can kind of see that they put a form of concrete underneath the bridge for more information about this bridge please check out bridgehunter.com it's a, a website that gives you the historical information about all the weird old bridges in your area it's really interesting it'll tell you like when it was made when it was updated who made it all sorts of stuff so very cool. Sarah's pretty geeked about this bridge. What do you think, honey? What grade is this on Bridge Hunter app? Oh, it's a B to B plus. This is a good, this is a good. Yeah. Maybe even an A minus. It's a pretty good bridge. All right. I think we're thinking about going to the star system instead of the the grading because the grading just felt a little harsh, you know? True, true. Okay. Four and a half stars then. Four and a half stars. Do you guys have any questions about this bridge? Put them in the comments below and I will make up an answer. <laughs> I think they put that there so sticks don't catch on it and rip up the limestone because uh, limestone is uh, pretty soft. Except for this one. Very cool. All right, that's definitely the coolest bridge we've ever hunted together. So it's a good catch. Dude, that looks like one of those chairs in Skyrim that's just sitting someplace cool. Like where you'd have a really nice sandwich. Yeah, no, it's just, it's just, they just got chairs in weird places. I don't really understand it. What do you think? Beautiful. This has been a really relaxing way to buy a snowmobile. <laughs> so, my pro tip is 
if dudes are into snowmobiles, if they buy kayaks, they can justify driving farther distances to go look at snowmobiles to buy, and I still get a happy girlfriend. Oh yeah, we can have a kayak trip while we're there. <laughs> There's a pro move right there. Yeah. Uh... All right, so that was a nice diversion. Uh, we are gonna put the transom here in a second, but before that, I just wanted to go over this sled because it is rad. What do you think, Sarah? It's a project. Yeah, this is the third phaser I've gotten in less than six months, so I don't know what's up with that. Hop in there once. What this is, is it's a Yamaha phaser two, and then the skid is from a 90s skidoo. I think it might be from a Rev, but it's a 136. So those two other phasers we have are 121s. So it's, yeah, over a foot longer. And then we got some pretty big paddles on this boy. I, I don't know. He said he had to tighten it in order to clear the tunnel. So we'll see how that goes. But then it has these uh, running boards from a Polaris RMK on here. So that's awesome. The front suspension is from a VMAX. So that's an, a couple inches height different so it, sh it should sit higher. I thought it was a little taller. Yep. And then it has a custom uh, bumper here that actually, I mean, if you hit a tree it's gonna break but it's gonna save the plastics which is kind of cool. Notice anything? Yeah. Anything on the controls? <laughs> what is up with this? Nice little hooky boy. That is the throttle. What? finger throttle it's so that when you're leaning on this thing off trail trying to like get this thing to do what you want you don't lean on the throttle okay. you can you can put all your weight right there and it's not gonna yeah, like get on the gas because sometimes when you're you know oh, I've, had, I've definitely had that yeah, <laughs> where, you, where, like, like, where yeah. you get kicked onto the gas and it's like you're trying to slow it down so yeah. and here's this ratty engine I was told it runs I don't really care because we have a part sled that runs. And then this brake is from a newer phaser. A not dented one of these. It actually looks a little dented. Actually it does, I was <laughs> like, maybe that's why they put them. So anyway, um, we are going to do some boat stuff, but I just am excited about this because phasers are really fun. So. They are, it's true. That's a good kickstart to this project. So stay tuned for that. All right, today was a big day. Uh, big day. We got a snowmobile, um, but this is the other thing. So this will be the heart of the Blue Mini, or whatever we're calling this thing. This oh, is, I like that name. This is a 200 horse Mercury V6. I hadn't heard that name idea before, by the way, and you may have just named the boat. Like, that might be the name of the boat. The Blue Mini? Yeah, it's fairly perfect. This is the midsection, and then this is a Sportmaster gear case Ooh. with the high speed pickup right here. So when this thing's on plane, this will be in the water, and this will be in the air. And so this is where all the cooling is into, right there. <laughs> How's it going, Sarah? Super annoying. Why is it annoying? Uh, because the silicone... What silicone? Why is there silicone there? That's a really good question, Rob. Why is there silicone here? Because uh, some idiot decided that there was a short-term fix here, so they goobered silicone where the cap meets the hull. And I'm about to put the transom in here, and that silicone needs to be gone so that we can get resin on that crack to bond this together really well. So, yeah, 
it's uh silicone does not want to leave it wants to stay yeah <laughs> Sarah's finishing the, the back of the hull here, and I thought I was done grinding, but I forgot to get that part right there, which needs to be tapped onto the side of the hull there once I put the transom in. So I need to get rid of that little ridge and scuff that up. So that means I need to suit up one more time. I did just get a fancy new suit, so that's cool. It doesn't have holes in it all over the place. Um, but yeah, one more grind session. Well, Right, it's finally time to put the transom in. I'm just gonna run over some of the materials. I purchased most of the stuff on Amazon, so links are below, but this is the woven roven. This is the big boy stuff. You can see it's a really heavy weave. That's gonna go on last. Um, this is some six inch tape. This is some four inch tape. This is just some chopped strand mat. This is just some sort of cloth. I forget what ounce it is, I'll put it in there. And then I have a huge chunk of the biaxial stuff that's going to be for the floor um, so what i'm going to do now the transom is being clamped up at the top and then the bottom still has some play so sarah's going to push down so it's against the hull and i'm going to drill from the drain plug and then we are going to run a bolt straight in here and clamp it and then once that's on there I'll be able to do a couple more bolt holes to kind of really compress this um, so that when we install the transom, it'll be a nice, like, sandwich. Sound good? I should be doing the Vanna thing. I should have been pointing as you were like. <laughs> <laughs> show, right. show this, too. There's more play than it looks like. So if my feet are here pressing, I'm nowhere near your drain no, you're plug, good. right? Yep. All right, so mixing fiberglass resin, there's usually a hardener to mix ratio. I'm gonna be using, these are one pint, and then I'm gonna be using a quarter ounce of, of the hardener. And then in addition to that, I also wanna leave room for these micro spears. So it's kind of like when you're ordering like coffee and you say with space, this is the creamer. You're leaving a little bit of room. Mm. Next one too? Yeah, yep. yeah, perfect.
All right, it's been about a half an hour and it's definitely setting up, so we're good. It just uh, didn't set up right away. And I think I figured out the problem. Um, Sarah read the instructions and what do they say, Sarah? <laughs> they say, when using polyester, do not add methyl ethyl ketone peroxide until desired thickness is achieved, which we did where? not do. <laughs> <laughs> Was the desired thickness achieved, Sarah? I mean, always, yeah. <laughs> so while this is curing, we don't think it's far enough along to take this stuff off because we actually took this off and this popped off and I don't know how cured it is right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to prototype some knees for the transom to give it additional strength. Basically you're tying a load from the outboard back here down into the floor somewhere. And my thought is instead of tabbing it just onto the floor, what if it comes down and gets on this vertical portion of the tunnel as well. So what that's going to do is you're still going to tab it, but you're going to get even more adhesion because the surface area of the knee that we put in here is going to be against this surface. So we'll tab it up here and tab it down there and run it down here. What's tricky about this though is I can't run it all the way up here because I have that splash well in here. So we're going to get make this out of cardboard and optimize it and then cut it out of Kusa and then we'll install it once we install that second layer of Kusa. Here we go. All right, so now that this is uh, set up, we're gonna take out all the clamps and the bolts, and then we are going to throw in the new transom, drill the holes again. Um, the reason we didn't transfer the holes right away was they kind of sit at an angle, so if, if they were exactly the same and then they sat at an angle, the holes wouldn't line up. So we're gonna drill holes in that, transfer that to the cloth, and then install the second layer of Kusa. All right, Sarah, what are you doing right now? Mixing the resin? Mixing the resin, and we're yeah. gonna make it um, twice, mix up twice as fast because we're running out of daylight and temperature and it didn't quite harden very quickly before. Yeah, and you like it hard right away. I do, yeah, okay. always, so, always, yeah. Um, <laughs> so you're such a jerk. <laughs> and, what, and what time is it? It. I took my watch off. Uh, it's, seven. It's 7 like PM, getting dark, yeah, and we don't have we don't have yard lights. So. And nothing bad ever happens when you rush, so this should be great. Yeah. All right, cheers. We finished putting in the transom. Well, no, hold on. There is a transom in the boat. Yeah, so it's not done yet. We still need to do another couple layers of uh, <laughs> glass and definitely ferret in and everything. But uh, yeah, transom's in, it's clamped, it's curing. There are so. no ants. No ants. All right, cheers. And, and honestly, I think that next week we're gonna have a lot more done because it doesn't look like there's thunderstorms every day yes. for like a week in a row. And half of Wisconsin won't be out of power for like four days. Yeah, now we have everything we need, so we're gonna crank.